nyamya ya adumu a otutu nae no de ukọ nkọ nim die ne mo nyamu se ye wa de pa de urade aka kire mi ni enam openi na koma papa nti onyame asa de o man ahye ni sabi bi bi enti mi si anu kwa awusi ha ya wanga na tv amamfo onsem a omubusa ne se eye de ne firi suru beti bayira hume ma ma bayire amu akesi wi webe no osu bempa akwa akwa declare eye as president mahama president ene no achia abomu aye na tu ni nyina ne se as president mahama ehia so fo enei na ohia omu no omu do masem tu dwa webe no bo fo ebusa a question e de na asem tu dwa so fo bebre e na omu do masem atu dwa abra as president mahama ehia omu na ba ko epi mpa e reven osu be mpa after omu tene omu nsa bo mpa ye e ma as president mahama e na wo che se nyame yi a che no se as president mahama na dwem pa e ye den na reven osu be mpa e hu se as president mahama e wa dwem pa na dwem pa enti e na 2024 election obe wi ni ye hwe se de reven osu be mpa ka sai ye reven obo fo ni ada so fo e ka sai e ni mpa bo a as president mahama e ji ya Reverend Owusu Bempa can who attend in sir e bomb pa e man no and at this anointing Reverend Owusu Bempa says he has one thing to say and he said i should say it but i said to him this is bigger than my mouth he who heard from god must say it reverend hallelujah ebram pa e bono koso no the radia catch me ni enam openi na koma papa nti onyame asa do o man ahye ni sabi bibi enti mi si anu kwa amen thank you thank you very much shall we all resume our seats Eddie Asidama Wadi, Midi the first century, Reverend Obofo no be any. Your Excellency, Wadi, Sir, Akonya Kasiya by Wafre Wadi in Kofu, Sir, Yemeshia. To me, there is not the first time. Menkai Oya, I'm sure we need a year to cry off here. We do ya, and our recommendation is Yama me mumpai. We were some major fever can occur. Me bro, fun ya na koi because I'm say hey. Last time, so I was in the and I was in the middle of the dance. I said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. If somebody is going to go to the coming back here is not a taboo. But I said, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Let's be honest to ourselves. I'm going to go to the house. Na the war for na ti dem bu sawo no ya ya wa den ko fo obi bo ne bra o ye bibi le nye ya o di america so dem no di na nim ko butu o nti min ko jubile house ti nsem no de ya ya ho na na kasi afa guo mi sira woni die kasa e mi se niam a da bia ye ni pa da da mo asetna a obi a bo bra o pese ne nsaka bi se obi si da di ni tire atum Yantisemente huwa semu Kampeye ni adie Yesro ya na monka hosu nko moka kira Semente nyame ya dona bedira Ayon Ross E huwa semu besi say Ezi ubi full throttle Akane no nani sika o di toko kono Di aka no coins o di full throttle Ene Throttle no Emse ufra Eya ya buwa chibi din Wada wama se nyame buwa na bedira Hosu nko mo Ebe uye say Ena First, no be seven copper jeans, be share on your t shirt, be our dear chasson. Dollar no, say, say, a din come off of fro. A person took on just sitting on. But Aroma said, a year, three day, can yammy a donor bedra. Dollar no, a home come more. A busy say. Necro cross said, yeah, the Covina man came into me, cabby. The seven did the apparatus to us, sir. Yammy a do more, or two to nine, nor do come good in the end, and when yammy say, yeah, by the pa. And that they wash your soft for. But do say what they do with that. I buy new cassia no so. That's it. Do say so. What are we buying? Eh, I know what's on Kai. No more fresh soft for. So say so. Say be any politicians go on a agenda with them. No money is shared. Not the way you see it. Tell me no. 
Yes, you are Kasabi, you are Sabi, and you are doing your back of Hong Kwan and then Anania Brewa. No, Sebastian say you be two and a morning in your Iam Ranian to a Eco Yamu, yes, I am on Frey and Sonia Samisha. Thank you, thank you very much. What is your other? That is Reverend Obofo. Sam, uh, go back. So, oh, okay. Oh, uh, Bishop. Okay. Yeah, it's about. Yes. So, so my name is Apostle Okay, Kamen. so hold on a second for me. So, to make it very easy for us, I'm going to crave your indulgence because of time. Please, if, you're in, if, if you have a question, just stand in the aisles for me. I want to plead with you so that I know the numbers I'm dealing with and that we know how to do this. Just stand in the aisles for me. We can do it. Hey, <laughs> please, please sit down. Please sit down. <laughs> Please, 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 you guys sit down. <laughs> Your Excellency. <laughs> you need to do this again. All right, Bishop. Please sit down. Please sit down. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. We know what to do. Don't uh, worry. What, yes. What, what could pass on my way? Uh, my, my name is Apostle Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Apostolic Mantle Worship Center. Yeah. Let, let's keep it short. My, mm -hmm. my question is about the dissolution of the bank and the, the microfinance. You know, as Reverend Obofo said, we know the people very well. They come to us. A lot of people are going in the house, graduate to, some of them to, what they call, Uber drivers. And they, cry, they come to us, we pray, we have to pray for them. Their problem is the dissolution. What is, will you bring the bank back? That is our prayer. Thank you very much. Okay, so, Obi, Let's take maybe two more. Two more here. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency, for this program. My name is Reverend Michael Benson, popularly called Reverend Power of Kings and Priests Church International. Um, Your Excellency, I have one question. And then a humble plea to um, all of us get there. Please, um, in this era of unanimous decision, 7050, that we were seeing just a few years ago, I mean, in this current administration, when issues go to court, I believe some of you may know what I'm talking about. My worry is how. Can we trust that when you come, the operation recover all loot? My worry is how, how can we believe that you can really pursue this? Because I remember you met, um, should I say, NDC lawyers some time ago, uh, lawyers who are sympathizers to NDC some time ago, and you raised the concern about how the current government has more or less filled the judiciary with their sympathizers. And so you are even encouraging them to, that when you come to power, they should also pursue those uh, uh, avenues. So this is the situation we have right now. The operation recover all loot. I foresee impediments at the all right. So you want to know how His Excellency Good. will handle like, that? The assurance that okay. is going to be very, Thank very you. effective. Thank you Number very two, much. Please, hey. the humble plea. Uh, that one is just a humble suggestion. Okay. Uh, with the exception of the fathers of the land, please, I'm begging all of you that I think that we should encourage our members to follow the political space. A lot of our people don't bother about our politics. They watch this soap press. Some of them, to me, they are necessary. But they need to also follow politics of the country to know how the country is being run. Thank you. It's being governed. Thank you. Please, this Thank is just a humble plea. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's a very important one. So, in all fairness, let's come to this lane. Some. One here. Then let's come to this lane. Now, yes. not all of us will get the opportunity to speak during this segment. But at the end of the program, you can see on the program you have that there will be a meet and greet photo of segment before His Excellency takes leave of us. And so you may get the opportunity to whisper something into his ear or to tell him something yeah. if you don't get the opportunity. 
during this segment to ask your question. Yeah, my name is uh, Prophet Dr. Richard Wilson from Multitude Evangelistic Ministry International. I saw a video circulating all over social media. A chief imam appealing to all Muslims to vote for a Muslim candidate. He says, Alensi, I want to know what are you saying to Christian body? <laughs> Secondly, my second question goes this way. We are looking for, we have been hearing that most of the names have been transferred to various places. Some people will go, they cannot find their names to vote. Now, I want to appeal to His Excellency and the Christian body, all our church leaders, pastors, bishops. Because most of the times when it happens, they will be asking Christian council to corner the candidate and talk to him in secret and, and tell him to accept the defeat or whatever. Please, please, please. What I'm trying to say is, if independent audit is not allowed to go through the registration on the 7th December if they bring any darkness result we should not accept it Christian council should not accept it thank you so put your feet down and thank appeal you. to EC right now before it is too late thank you very much so uh, your excellency says I should take two more for this round he will answer and then we'll do one last round before we go so let Sam, Sam, please. <laughs> Reverend Lamptey, we'll come, we'll come. Let's, just so we are, we are equitable with the way we take the questions, yes. So two here, two here. Hello, Your Excellency. I am Apostle Joshua, Oreku Kudlok, City of Salvation, United Kingdom. I flee all the way from the UK. <laughs> the message that the Lord gave in regards to your promise to restore and bring back the national day of prayer and thanksgiving. It is laid on our spirit and our hearts that as a nation, it has to be a national day of reflection, repentance, thanksgiving, and new expectations. Because we cannot, as human institution, ignore the fact that we don't make errors and we cannot move forward if we can identify or acknowledge our errors before we move so i will advocate that that wonderful day of thanksgiving and prayer will be a national day of reflection repentance and then All right. thanksgiving and then new, new expectations expectations thank you very much the second one please psalm 127 it says except the lord builds the house we build in vain and as human institutions we may encounter crisis i will advocate that in terms of crisis if we can call the fathers of the land i mean the spiritual fathers to engage in retreats so that god can give us the way out by his own counsel thank you thank you very much Trump, let's do one from here Let's do one from here. Yeah. Your Excellency, my name is Okorie Miriku. Uh, Meda Asafoa, a year Redeemers Ego Chapel International, down so my griefy. Now, I may say, yeah, Casa. I'm not your papa, yeah, Casa. No, yeah, Casa, be brave. But I dare back home and me when they say, yeah, can in Sua, I die, yeah, patam, yeah, patam, who was him. Let me say, Papa, you are going to two a coin, a coin, crubby, be so. Crubia be a far, a gina, a usua, a diam patamoso. But you are sure a crab, Kumasi, Regency, you know, a usua da, yam patamina, ya bassa, Nina, a beer, and why it's me de boot, a fasso, a cobbler be. Me pass me be, sir, 
se ewrade ya dom na ye papa nya akwanya no osan ba biye mu a se nsu e nyina edie na obetumi aya fa ho ama gana abeye gana na de atusu miye ni soso ye pese mbisa ne se ni opponent ne ka se mbisa se oba obeje in sorry tax na ono nsoso no na dwen kire ne se ono so ba e ye the same ana se uh, one your bar, so right. in your Thank you very much. Yeah, Obi, because they, they've been standing for long, let's just do a few of them. And then His Excellency can take these ones. Okay, thank you. Again, on the day of prayer, my simple father, Christopher Vojogbe, National Catholic Secretariat, Director, Religious Education, for prayer to be a prayer, we have to act on it. If you gather to pray for peace, then we must pursue justice. Otherwise, the prayer for peace we will not have peace in this country. If you want, to, if you gather to pray for good rain to enhance our agriculture, then we must stop abusing our environment. So, if you gather to pray, let us act on the prayer and God will answer our standing. Thank you very much. One more. One more in the queue. Welcome. Medin de Osofo Osei Bonsu from Scotland, UK. Christ Compassion and leader of JDM Door to Door Campaign Team. Me papa no me mpasa be kan nyina em se binu medikan kana me question ye ba ko pe ma ye wura o man bia ne chichire no ye the professionals e ne chichire ene wo ba uk a ye professionals be bre ya ba be go na no be ne nan ne na me ba bi be tena me ho sui adwuma kra wo nya bi nye se ye wura ba sa anko fo na akodis akoka amanonea or person will be fear, won't to me mana, or Juma and Uncle or Yen and Hide Matitra, and ne a binum abbas a sour a contumono, den na yura, a bear warm. Yes, 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 when uh, His Excellency was speaking, he talked on the subject of uh, granting, giving grants to first year students, the first year. And then the subsequent year, they'll be giving loans. I wanted to ask and know whether the grants, is it all inclusive? That is government and private institutions. Because if you would do a proper assessment, you would know that Ghana is now more pro-private institution. They keep on growing, including churches, going into institutions. So I want to know whether that grant would also include students from the private institutions. All right, thank you. Then, then uh, secondly, uh, His Excellency, in his speech or talk, kept on, you know, saying, we would do it, promise I do this. We are good. I didn't hear anything about income generation proposal because for all that you intend doing, they must be funded. And I didn't hear any income generation proposal. And for me, I want to just propose that uh, his team will do very good research and come out with a proper taxation system so that not just a few Ghanaians bear the burden, especially salary okay. workers. So you're talking Amen. about revenue mobilization. Thank yes, you. Thank so last one on that row and then we will wait till the second stage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Sami. 
and thank you to our fathers, especially my father, Reverend Anyanibodu. Daddy, God bless you. God bless you so much. My first question goes to His Excellency. You know, as a clergy, one of the things that we know is the tolerance. Your Excellency, you, by the grace of God, you get the position as a president. Sometimes there are a lot of men of God that maybe cannot agree with you in your administration. If those part of maybe men of who are not agreement in your style of leadership and they are talking, we've not heard you say anything against any man of God, but sometimes the communicators outside do say certain things against men of God. What are you going to do to ensure that those we would disagree. He, he has already won us. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Uh -huh. All right, ladies and, uh, and gentlemen, finally, I think we've had a, a lot finally, of this round. Finally, we had recently in the news that there is a looming situation about food crisis because there is a shortage and there is a rain crisis in the northern part of the country. What are you going to do to make sure that we will not find ourselves in food uh, crisis? Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. A round of applause for all those who asked questions and made observations and contributions. And with that, let's welcome to the microphone His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Wow, thank you very much. Very insightful questions. Uh, let me answer them briefly so that we'll have space to ask some more. Um, the first one was... Um, um, Reverend uh, Michael, Catholic Secretary, yeah, good to see you again. And it's about um, the, the, the mode of our politics where a duop duopoly, a dual you know, party uh, system, because you have two major parties that dominate the political landscape. So sometimes the narrative becomes a bit too partisan. And I think that the posture of government itself and the president uh, uh, is what determines, you know, how more partisan it becomes. Um, aside from that, we also need an, a reorientation of our media, and that is because the, a lot of the media is private owned, and the way our discussions are, you know, shaped are to bring adversarial political forces to come and discuss everything under the sun. And so you're talking about um, veterinary medicine. And they go and bring somebody from NDC, somebody from MPP, to discuss veterinary medicine and animal health. You know, every discussion in every talk show is, is, is between uh, political advers uh, adversaries. And that's one of the problems. I mean, we have duopolies in America, where there are two major parties, the, um, um, cons the um, Republicans and the, the Democrats. And then in the UK, we have the Conservatives and Labour. Yet, you don't hear politicians on radio every morning, you know, debating with each other and insulting each other. You can listen to all the talk shows. If there's something to be discussed, they'll bring neutrals, if it has to do with politics, or they'll bring people who have expertise in that particular area of uh, discussion. But unfortunately, the, the, the stations seem to get better ratings when people are insulting each other and throwing abuse at each other. And then when it hits the climax and they are virtually at each other's throat, then they will pass their jingle through you know, it means they are very happy. I'm, I'm naming it station. But to pass their jingle through, you know, it means that it's really heated in the studio. That is what we have done to ourselves. Unfortunately, the Constitution guarantees media freedom. We can reorient them gradually, but you cannot force them to change their style. And it's not only governments that should assist to reorient them. I think that if civil society and all our leaders you know, take part and point out that, look, this is wrong. We must not always be uh, about politics. We must not always, every discussion in the morning. Indeed, when I was president and I woke up from 6, if I survived till 10 o'clock, 
then I know the rest of the day will be okay. Because 10 o'clock, every station is discussing how useless you are. How... <laughs> So, unfortunately, that is the society in which we live. We live. I think that it will change with time, but for the meantime, uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, Father Ajima, we intend to hold the National Education Dialogue, and so I think that ourselves and the Catholic Church can collaborate, because there's a lot of dysfunction in our educational system. The basic level that should receive a lot of our attention and resources, unfortunately, is being underfunded the uh, uh, support in terms of uh, books for the students at the basic level. For five years now, they haven't got uh, any textbooks. Uh, the curriculum has been changed. They've not got new textbooks to be able to follow the curriculum. And um, the captation grants that should go to the schools is in arrears for more than one year. And so we need to reorient ourselves as to how we pay attention to um, our educational system. And I think that in that dialogue, we can resolve the issue of the management of schools and all that. I remember the MOU, I said at um, the function we held in Tamale, you know, that we we're going to add the MOU as a, an issue for discussion and reach an understanding where all of us can sign onto the MOU. So let's collaborate on the national education dialogue with the Catholic Church so that we all come and bring our issues on board and then we forge a consensus going forward. Reverend Obofo Eka Enyoma Boaeding, I just said, Nese Opesu Sidaya. Cement, I turn on one million Kigana cities per bag. I had the Empire Obia or Dancy for Osha inflation, so called Astro, and Neo Kojuma was about China and Yoma Ninabo a Pega. Na Nina Fi say Yesika Sem, Senia, I say a drono, and Nona Ma and Yoma a Bayasa, a car a bedaya so apart from that and so. We share 2021 and 2022. I buy a Bosnia Free Central Bank to the tune of more than 70 billion CDs. Now, say, oh yeah, economics are your catch or say, say, see, cabbage doors will chroma and my inflation cost because we'll be able to scan it because it's too much money chasing too few goods. And I know, and so and so, and now, yeah, for me, because of the massive injection. Uh, uh, buying a buying Busia from Bank of Ghana at the tow uh, uh, system. No more. I feel a Bank of Ghana person a treaty second a free uh, economy. No, send a bear, a bema, a yoma, a boar, a yemre, a cra. And now I'm sure they are introducing a gold coin so that people who have excess money will buy the gold coin so that they can mop up more of the currency from the system. And I know Nina, a yoma, a bear. The first thing we are going to concentrate on is stabilizing the economic environment and stabilizing the currency. Because maybe a dollar ne CD exchange rate in the cost run, not be a cost run. In the OSE, it is a year near Bitimiama, a second age in a farm, Senebea, a Bema, a Noma, a Kakrama, a Shemwa, a Shemwi. Enye ni katoa ebeshim, mesha ubose nyami adum, oyami adum na mebedi omampenya afibia ebenya akwenya neshe ya se. The the banks that were closed, the problem with the banks existed when I was president, and it came as part of the national economic briefs that I used to get and also the security briefs I used to get. But we looked at it multidimensionally that we needed to do something to save the banks. And so what we did was we gave some liquidity support and then apart from that we were passing depositors guarantee bills and so on and so forth to create a better legislative framework uh, to, to guide, uh, guide the banks. And the intention was that once we cross the hurdle uh, into the next administration, we will take a decision on how to uh, work it out. 
Um, it's not rocket science. It's been done in this country before. We had the Financial Sector Adjustment Program, FinSAP, for those of you who remember. And at that time, what, we, what the government did was we took all the to toxic assets and liabilities off the books of the bank and we gave it to a body called the Non-Performing Assets Recovery Trust. And then we cleaned up the books of the banks, improved their supervision, while the Non-Performing Assets Recovery Trust went after the liabilities in order to uh, recoup what had been taking, uh, the debts that had been taken off. And it worked. The banks came back to good health and they continued to um, um, uh, do their work. When the World Financial Crisis happened, uh, the Bank of Scotland was in trouble and was in danger of collapsing because of liquidity challenges. What did the Bank of England do? They gave them money and they took equity in the bank and they put Bank of England supervisors in the bank. They worked with the management until the bank recovered and paid the loan that the Bank of England gave gradually. Today, the Bank of Scotland is one of the strongest banks that you have uh, in UK. And so we could have used the same, you know, uh, um, the same method. Uh, what the banks needed to be able to survive would not have exceeded, uh, it's estimated about 9 billion CDs to save them. So government could have advanced that money and then cleaned off the liabilities and taken equity and released the equity back gradually to them as they paid back. Unfortunately, the government decided to shut them down. And when they shut them down, together with all the savings and loans companies and all of them, they created a, a, a debt of 25 billion. And so you solve a 9 billion problem with a 25 billion uh, CD debt. I mean, nobody does that. And look at the kind of dislocation it caused. A lot of those people, he says, are Uber drivers. I mean, I know one who is a baker. She set up a bakery now. She's a banking professional. And a, a friend of our family was working in the bank. And so she came to me for support. I bought some ovens for her. And she's baking bread and meat pie and things instead of, you know, <laughs> doing accounting and, and what she was doing before. And so it has caused a lot of social dislocation. Two of my daughter's mates in school had to be withdrawn because their parents, who were both bankers, had lost their jobs and they could no longer afford to pay the fees in the school in which my daughter was. So if you think about the social dislocation it has caused, I think that the decision was hasty. It is part of the, the, the reason we're facing this crisis because that banking sector clean out debts was added onto our li liabilities because government guaranteed the deposits. And so if you guarantee the deposits, then you have the obligation to pay uh, for the monies that, you know, had, had been lost as a result. So I would have done it differently, but the reality is that it was done, and uh, now we have to face the crisis for it. I've said that we'll re-look at it because what it has done is it has wiped out indigenous participation in our finance and banking sector. These were the banks that were owned by Ghanaians. Most of the banks that are left are foreign-owned banks. And they found themselves in this difficulty because they were the ones lending to small and medium enterprises. And small and medium enterprise lending is the riskiest part of banking. The big banks don't want to do it. And so it's those small Ghanaian banks that were doing it. And that's why they got into trouble. And so we had an obligation to save them. Unfortunately, we didn't. We flushed them down the drain. And you can't go to the abscess of this world or the stambics of this world as a small baker and go and get the same kind of attention and finance that you would have got from UT Bank or Unibank or one of them. So we're saying that we'll restore Ghanaian's participation in the banking and finance sector because who owns your banking asset is a national security issue. We must not have our banking sector dominated only by foreign banks. We must have indigenous banks that are owned by Ghanaians. Um, Reverend Benson talked about the unanimous FC and uh, how, how will operation recover all the loot work when the judiciary has been packed you know, with, with judges. We have been drawing attention to this. This president has appointed more judges 
than all the judges appointed by all presidents from independence. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. From Nkrumah to uh, my administration, if you calculate all the judges appointed, you know this president has appointed in eight years more judges than all judges in history. And um, the appointment of judges is a very crucial thing in every country. In U.S., they have a limit on the number of uh, justices of the Supreme Court. So everybody is praying that there will be precedent when a vacancy occurs on the Supreme Court so that they can appoint uh, one justice. Unfortunately, there is no cap here in Ghana, and so this president has taken the opportunity to appoint as many judges as possible on the Supreme Court, and even the appeal courts. We don't have enough appeal courts. I think we have two appeal courts. Or there was one in Tamale. I hear it's been closed down. And yet we have about 50, more than 50 appeal court judges. And as for high court judges, just yesterday he was swearing in another 21. <laughs> and it gives the impression that the courts are being packed for exactly the reason you are talking about. That once they appoint the judges, if cases involving accountability for abuse of public office come before the judges, because they appointed them, they would leave them off the hook. I, we will do our part, we will let the anti-corruption institutions work, and my trust and belief is that our judges will do the work that they have been appointed to do. They should look at the cases impartially and let justice prevail. After all, if somebody has been involved in wrongdoing, it is our taxpayers' money, including the judges' taxpayers' money, that has been misappropriated. And so he should look at the facts of the case. And if wrongdoing has been done, to do justice uh, the way they should do it. I mean, our judges have security of tenure. You cannot remove them from office. And so they have nothing to fear. It doesn't matter who appointed you. Once you have been appointed, you cannot be removed by any president. And so my expectation is that they'll use their conscience and they would uh, use their belief in whatever uh, uh, religion that they, they, they are part of to do justice when the cases come before them. I don't want any innocent pe person jailed, but when the things come, they should look at the facts of the case and judge it accordingly. They say the law is an ass, and so sometimes <laughs> it will go anywhere you kick it. And so sometimes technicalities and things are used to get people off the hook. But um, it's my hope and prayer that we would gather the evidence, the anti-corruption institutions will do the investigations, and then when the facts are there, we'll go and put it before the judges, and the rest is left to their discretion. Um, the second one was about Christians participating in politics. I believe more Christians and more people of faith should participate in uh, politics. Um, Prophet Wilson um, talked about an, an imam asking all Muslims to vote for a Muslim uh, candidate. Um, I, I think I saw the video too, and um, I thought it was most unfortunate um, because um, the office we are vying for is not an office that we are being elected to deal with the spiritual. We're being elected to deal, to manage the country and manage uh, human, uh, uh, um, uh, the citizens of this nation. Yes, we need spiritual guidance, we need prayers and intercession, but the qualification for doing that does not mean that one must be of a certain religion or not. And so if we were appointing a new pope, of course, you must be Catholic to become a pope. If we're appointing a new bishop, uh, you must belong to that church to be a bishop. If we're appointing a new general superintendent for assemblies of God, you cannot come from anywhere and come and uh, be elected as a general superintendent. If you are, uh, if they are electing a new national chief imam, of course, Pastor Wengam cannot go and become a, a new national chief imam. So you, you have to elect a Muslim. 
So we are not electing leaders of religious denominations. We are electing leaders to lead the nation. And, and so I, don't, I, I do think that as much as possible the discourse should not bring our religion in. Let's look at the people who are offering themselves and let us, based on our assessment of what we think is possible and what they can do, elect the best person uh, to lead this country. And so I'll say what he did was unfortunate, but um, of course people get very emotive when it gets to issues of um, politics and especially when it comes to uh, who becomes the president. Uh, with regards to the audits of the register, like I said, they are at an IPAC meeting. I hope that they'll be able to uh, resolve this because we think that the Electoral Commission should do its work properly, and that's why we are putting a lot of pressure on them. Look at what happened during the district assembly elections. They told us they were ready. Everything was set for the district assembly elections. On that day, all of us were ready. Remember that. Um, uh, on the day of the district assembly elections, half of the country did not vote because the electoral commission was not ready. It didn't have the right registers at the right places and all that kind of thing. You saw the commotion that it caused. So part of us voted today and the other parts voted tomorrow. Can you imagine if this happens during the presidential elections that on the day we find out that you know, things are so disorganized that uh, some parts of the country are, are not voting or they are late in voting and all that. Can you imagine the chaos it will cause? And so when we try to put electoral commission's feet to the fire, we're doing it so that they will sit up and do a good job. 58% of Ghanaians from the afro Baramta Service say that they believe in the electoral commission. And so they must not betray the trust of that 58% that believe in them. And that's why they must sit up and do the right thing. If you audit a register, it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't bring any stigma on the Electoral Commission. It's been done before, and you, I don't know why they're so, you know, uh, up in arms and defensive about having an audit of the register. We should have done this about a month ago when we started calling for it. We would have been done with it. All of us would have put the register behind us and be looking at other things to do with the processes towards the election. Unfortunately, they've kept defending and refusing till now, you know, and so I don't know whether there's still enough time, but I hope that today's uh, meeting would resolve it. National Day of Prayer and Thanksgiving, you would have to decide what to name it yourself. I have given the concept, but the actual organization of the day will be left with the religious leaders to decide. You will name what it is, whether it's a day of reflection or a day of um, a prayer and uh, a, 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 a retreat or whatever. It will be for you to decide you know, how you want it to be. But I can assure you that the whole nation, the executive, parliament, the judiciary, everybody would participate so that um, we give thanks to God and pray for his intercession to continue to bless our nation. Um, Redeemer's Chapel, he talked about the polluted waters. Indeed, waters make cities, tourist attractions, and very beautiful. And so if you go to many countries, you find that they have a river running through. Unfortunately, Accra doesn't have rivers, actually. They are streams. And so they are not made for boat riding and things like that. These are streams that pass through the city from the Equipping mountain range. When it rains on the mountain range, the waters, you know, flow towards the sea. When there was no city here, there was no problem because the Odor stream was there, the Sakumo stream was there, all the streams were there, and they carried water from the mountain to the sea. So what has happened now is a city has imposed itself in the course of those streams between the mountain and the sea. So the water will continue to come because it will continue to rain. But then we have obstructed the path that the streams used to take to go to the sea. And the more that we restrict their channels, the more they will overflow their banks. And so what we've done traditionally is to always desilt and take away the silt because 
they bring a lot of silt from the mountain and they deposit it in their uh, bed and in their river beds in the stream beds as they go towards the sea so what we've done traditionally is to desilt all the they call them primary uh, uh, drains and then uh, secondary drains and tertiary drains um, unfortunately it's gotten much worse because places i knew that never used to flood today are flooding so it means that the obstruction is becoming worse or it means also that government is not doing the desilting that it should normally do before the rains uh, come and so this is something that um, we have to deal with we've said in our manifesto that we'll find an engineering solution for it uh, this has to do with hydrology and there are hydrological aspects who can determine how to deal with it sometimes they're able to divert the course of the stream and let it pass areas that are less built up but these are things that we would look at um, if god uh, smiles on us um, are we going to tax churches absolutely not the law is that the law is that commercial activities of churches are taxed but the church itself and its revenues in terms of tithes in terms of collections in terms of all that um, are not supposed to be taxed and i don't intend to tax uh, that but if the church sets up an industry and it is working for profit then those profits are taxed but not the revenue of the church itself <laughs> father christopher says the day of prayer must go with action i agree with you um, you can pray all you like if you sit in your room and think that god will come and uh, fulfill the prayer you'll be very disappointed so as you pray to God, you must take action to make sure that the prayer um, you are praying is fulfilled. So I agree with you completely. Um, brain drain, a lot of our people are moving out. And they always do when there's a crisis. Human beings naturally will migrate to places where there's better opportunity. And so you cannot force them not to migrate. What we must do is to solve the crisis in our economy so that we can reverse the brain drain um, there was a time when doctors were coming back other people were coming back when things uh, appeared stable in ghana but with the crisis we've gone into it's accelerated the brain drain again and so you have you find people who have a qualification that is useful to us but go outside and then they go to do menial jobs somebody is a qualified architect you know somebody is qualified in a certain profession but they go out and they cannot find the kind of jobs for which they train and so that becomes a, a, a problem and so we need to fix our economy as quickly as possible we need to grow our economy so that we can get our people to come back and invest and stay uh, in Ghana but in the meantime what I propose is that we can um, have organized migration and so what and we have it in our manifesto is that we'll sign agreements with countries it's been done currently kenya and germany have that agreement we'll sign agreements with countries and they can give people who are qualified a fixed contract for a certain number of years to go and work and come back and so it's been done we will look for countries that are willing to accept some of our people there in europe and other parts of the world because of the low birth rates they are having uh, labor so shortages and so they are in need of carpenters skilled carpenters they are in need of skilled plumbers they are in need of welders they are in need of so many other professionals of which we probably have an excess and so if we have agreements with them we can send some masons and carpenters and welders and uh, uh, some health workers health professionals teachers and others to go and work on fixed term contracts at least earn some money buy a car uh, be able to be, come and build a house and improve your life you know and so that's one of the things that we will make a part of our ministry of employment it would also have something to do with organized uh, migration um what else um, the grant to first year schools it, co it covers academic fees and it's to public uh, tertiary institutions um, we it's the beginning and so we are starting with 
uh, uh, public tertiary institutions. At the secondary level, we intend to bring the private schools in because we have determined that the private schools at the second level have capacity because of the introduction of the free SHS. A lot of people have migrated from the public schools because of fee paying in the private schools. And so we want to extend the free SHS into the private schools so that we can ease the congestion in the public schools. That will help us to solve the double track. We'll finish the e-blocks that we're building as quickly as possible to create more space and then we'll bring the private schools in so that they can absorb some of the children and it will ease the congestion so that we can let all the children go to school together and also vacate at the same time instead of this double track where they sit at home for three months, go to school for four weeks, uh, something bizarre, bizarre like that. <laughs> um, so for the meantime, the uh, no fee um, academic first year is for public schools. Um, as the economy grows and uh, becomes better, we will look at the other um, uh, private institutions. Uh, spreading the tax net, I don't think that we should just continue to pile uh, taxes on those who are immediately visible, like those who have fixed incomes, businesses and others. To tax the informal sector, government has traditionally used indirect taxes, and normally is the value added tax. And so, if Ghana, uh, uh, government wants more money, they uh, devise an indirect tax and they slap it. And that's what the COVID levy and all those levies are. Right now, Ghana is paying one of the highest VAT rates in Africa. If you take all our value added taxes, um, uh, COVID levy and all of them, NHIL, Get Fund, and all of them, our effective tax rates for indirect taxes is at 22%, which is the highest in the whole of Africa. We need to find a way to ease that burden because it, it has an effect on investment. If somebody wants to come and invest in Africa, in West Africa, if he looks at our tax rates and he compares it to the tax rates in Cote d'Ivoire, he will go to Cote d'Ivoire instead. And so we are becoming less and less competitive. And so I'm saying to the IMF that, yes, you say we should increase revenue, but it doesn't mean that we should just continue piling on the taxes because it's having an indirect effect of making our country less competitive in the sub-region in terms of investment. And that's why last year, foreign direct investment was the lowest in the history of Ghana at one point something, in the history of the Fourth Republic, at one point something billion. In 2016, before I left office, uh, uh, foreign direct investment into Ghana was at 3.3 billion dollars. This year is just slightly over, one, uh, last year it was just slightly over 1 billion. And that is because we are becoming less and less attractive as an investment destination. And so we need to rationalize the taxes and we must look at other things that bring in revenue. For instance, property rates. We are not collecting property rates well enough. You know, they don't come, they don't bring the bill, nothing. My father's house, one day I was there, they came and put a notice, they are going to sell the house. I said, how? How can you sell the house? They said, we haven't paid property rate. I said, but we've not received any bill. They said, go to the sub-metro office. We went to the sub-metro office, and you haven't paid your property rate. I said, yeah, but we haven't received any bill. They said, but your bills are here. You haven't paid for five years. But what are the bills doing there? <laughs> Somebody failed to deliver the bills. You know, and so if we collect property taxes better, we probably would um, be able to uh, do things better. Uh, tolerance for criticism. Um, I do think that, I mean, everybody knows me. When I was president, I was criticized from all directions, and uh, I didn't react. Um, but like you're saying, uh, we should uh, train our people to be tolerant of criticism. I have always told them, and Sami said I've told them, I said, do as I do. Uh, I am not a person who, you know, uh, takes criticism in bad faith. And I normally don't respond, you know, adversarially to criticism. So I encourage our media people to be the same, and I'll continue to do that. Um, and then food crisis due to drought, we need to bring more of our agriculture under irrigation. Uh, this year, uh, the rains failed. I, myself, I'm a farmer. I have a 300-acre farm, soya bean and maize. 
and uh, my luck is that I have irrigation equipment and so when the rains were not coming I deployed them and so it saved my crop. But Thank you very much for this corporate anointing here but I want to honor the Archbishop uh, Papa Danka Williams uh, he's represented here heavily uh, by his sons uh, the chairman of the bishops conference is here Bishop Obodai uh, is here with me and then we, we've been praying in English I want a prayer in three and I'm going to ask Prophet uh, Osu Bempa to uh, pray in three uh, so that the cameras uh, the radio stations will, cap will capture uh, that one uh, why is this place so chaotic receive your miracle you will never be disgraced and you will never be ashamed clap your hands and say yeah do yeah do hallelujah stretch off your hands to me yeah oh to me yeah Lift up your voice and lift up your hands. She on Yakumaye, in Shirama on Yami, as a for Yehoah. We are on Domakuma. Ebre <laughs> What in Timono? Oh, my Acuna Cassius. Oh, yes, dear Mo. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you determine the times and the seasons of man, and we declare that this is the season and the time and the turn of your servant. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, we declare prophetically that that which God has established, no one can come against it. Now we declare that may the Lord hold you by your right hand. Uh, may the Lord go before you and make every crooked way straight. May he break through the gates of iron and brass and show you the treasures of darkness. May you receive the riches of the time servant of god arise and take your place in the name of who who died laid in the grave and arose triumphantly on the third day even by the covenant and the eternal covenant of the blood we declare together that this is established in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy ghost and all shouted and said amen and now we make a declaration in the power of the name Jesus that whom God has blessed nobody can curse we command the arrows of the evil and the arrows of the wicked to turn back into the place of the wicked for the net which they have cast for you they will fall in the net and the pit that they have died they will fall in the pit and every tongue that has risen against the servant of God we condemn and now we ask that heaven be open and that heaven will rest upon him and upon this man with grace and glory that lord you guide his footsteps 
and you will take him to the length and breadth of this nation and everywhere that he will go. Order his steps, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that the counsel of Jehovah for his life, according to the purpose of the call of God, shall be established. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. And that which God has instituted before eternity and before time and when he was a clot of blood in his mother's womb, let the counsel of the Lord stand. Let the counsel of Jehovah stand. Let the counsel of Jehovah stand. Let the counsel of Jehovah stand. Of Jehovah stand. Like Jesus Christ, he has come to you. He is not asking for anything. He is asking for open heavens. Let heaven open and rest upon him with a voice which said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Establish him. Settle him. Strengthen him. Bless him. That's what he has come to ask for. Bless him with good health. Bless him with strength. Bless him with wisdom. Bless him with knowledge. Bless him. Bless him with wisdom. And let this nation, Ghana, be a blessing because we had a man called John Dramani Mahama. We thank you that heaven has established what we have agreed upon this earth doing. For when two or three shall gather and shall bind on this earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And when we lose on this earth, it shall be loose in heaven. We have declared a new time and a new season. According to the word of the Lord, so shall it be. In the name of Jesus, and thou, O Father, take the glory, take the praise, and take the honor. And the people shall start celebrating.